Welcome to the third annual CPL Summit. Uh, very excited today. It's, uh, you know, we build this as, and it looks like it's going to be the largest CPL event, the most um, broad C credit for prior learning event in California history with over 600 RSVPs. And we have actually over 175 colleges, universities, and agencies um, attending. So thank you for RSVPing, spending your Friday morning here with us. We, um, Today we have a chance to explore credit for prior learning as the ideal pathway for our reentry students. Uh, this is a guided pathway for our reentry students. We want to see it as a new framework moving forward. We want to turn CPL into the way, the manner we bring in those reentry adults back into our system. So thank you for joining us and making that possible on your campuses. In California, you know, we're coming up to um, the election time and we often feel like it's a binary choice. You have a choice between A or B. We don't have to make that choice in California public education. We can choose both our traditional students and our non-traditional students. And that's what today is about is, is fitting credit for prior learning and industry credentials, military education, all those non-traditional pathways to the same mold as tech prep, AP, and our credit for prior learning for our traditional students. Uh, we have a star-studded, exceptional um, speaker set of speakers and panelists. Um, and without further ado, let's move on and make 2023 the year of breakthrough for CPL. Okay, some meeting tips. Um, know that, as you've already noticed, as you folks are putting in your name and your institution, chat is enabled. We're going to be monitoring the chat. We have several uh, facilitators that will help with that. Uh, we also do, we're using this format of Zoom so we can engage folks when appropriate when we get into our breakout sessions. The agenda will be loaded in to the chat. So we ask that with this PDF version of the agenda that you actually download it on your computer in case you do jump off of Zoom. If you have any Wi-Fi issues, uh, we will be adding that into the chat box. So take a look over there and, and download, please. The sessions will be recorded and both those recorded sessions and the slide decks will be available after the summit. Uh, you can join any concurrent breakout room, but uh, just like we, we do um, in face-to-face -face sessions, you know, we have some beauty in, in meeting face-to-face -face and that you can network and engage other folks. You can still use that chat feature to private message or engage your peers as you hear this content but know that you can actually leave a breakout room and walk on over and, and check out another session if you'd like to. And then uh, we do ask very much uh, when you're in one of those breakout rooms, be careful as you exit. It's very easy to exit the meeting altogether. Uh, you wanna make sure you exit the breakout room and not exit the entire session. Calvin? Okay, why, why are we here today? What's the purpose? We really wanna build a shared understanding, vocabulary and vision for our institutions, our public institutions across the strait. Uh, we, we need to find that this is a normal and expected process to evaluate and assess credit for prior learning and bestow that credit, transcript that credit when appropriate and when it fits that unique situation of that student, whether they're a veteran or a student that has prior learning from non-veteran experience. And we want to maximize CPL within those pathways. So we minimize debt, we maximize GI Bill use, and we expedite the process towards your certificate, your bachelor's, or your master's completion. Calvin? Next slide. Okay, um, coming in with our, um, our welcome, uh, Calvin, if you can go back one slide, we um, are uh, excited to have the California Community Colleges uh, represented here. We have a few welcomes. I want to thank um, Shantae Guinea for stepping in for uh, Vice Chancellor uh, Dr. Uh, Aisha Lowe. If I can hand it off to Shantae for her welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Terrence. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Team Norco, uh, for the invitation for the Chancellor's Office to join today. Um, thank you as well for the warm introduction. My name is Shante Ginny. I'm a credit for prior learning specialist at the Chancellor's Office in Sacramento, and I'm also a proud Air Force veteran. Uh, on behalf of the Chancellor's Office, our executive leadership team and colleagues, including Chancellor Dr. Daisy Gonzalez, Executive Vice Chancellor Marty Alvarado, and Vice Chancellor Dr. Aisha Lowe, I'm honored to share warm welcome remarks on behalf of uh, Dr. Lowe this morning, who unfortunately couldn't join us, but she's with us in spirit and we do wish her 
um, uh, well throughout the day. So first and foremost, I um, just wanna say thank you to the phenomenal practitioners that are leading the way in the credit for prior learning space um, there and also so much further beyond. As we all know, CPL uh, you know, it encompasses so many different realms across campuses and so many aspects of students on their journey. So just wanna send a shout out first and foremost and say thank you to the practitioners. Um, without you, this wouldn't be possible. So truly from the bottom of our heart, thank you for all that you do to put policy into practice and to change uh, the outcomes for students along their journey. And we firmly recognize and value that the fact that CPL is an equity lever. Uh, the untapped opportunities and benefits associated with CPL, um, such as the boost in access and completion and college and career attainment, and also, uh, I guess, more widespread as well, the benefits for the economy of California um, in the workforce space. Uh, the responsibility and obligation per law and also per regulations um, that we have to give our veterans and also our experiential learners uh, any and all college credit they deserve. I mentioned that I'm also, I'm an Air Force veteran and when I came to the community college system, I by all means benefited uh, thankfully from credit for prior learning. So again, just a round of applause to the practitioners that are leading the way in that space to make CPL a reality for students. Uh, we, need a, uh, we need a no cost system that allows uh, colleges and universities to create an award and share their articulations. And we are by all means uh, leading the way in that space, partnering with our Norco, Norco College team and also practitioners uh, system-wide to leverage resources to do just that and to put CPL equity and access at the center of our system. Uh, the need for a public site that allows students to access their own potential credits and also petition colleges for credit for prior learning. Um, the pathways with our intersegmental partners from community colleges to the CSU system or the UC and also to career pathways to uh, boost robust opportunities for California as well. So without a doubt, there is a need to integrate CPL into uh, across campuses, into our systems, um, whether it be common course numbering, whether it be uh, strategic CPL alignment, as I mentioned before, intersegmental alignment, um, and by all means, faculty expertise and advocate, advocacy uh, to continue to make CPL accessible um, to students that in fact do need it the most. Um, so again, just wanna say thank you so much for the opportunity to uh, share with you today at the summit. And um, I do by all means hope that you get as much out of it um, as I'm looking forward to. I know we're in great hands with Team Norco. Um, so on that note, I will turn it back over to you, Terrence. And um, thank you again and appreciate everyone for joining us today. Shante, thank you so much. We really appreciate you. And, and honestly, the years of work you've put in on behalf of the chancellor's office to help us at the college level. You've, you've been wonderful over the years. I'm gonna um, segue into another partner we have in this and probably one of the most important is the ASCCC, the Statewide Academic Senate. And the faculty has been in lockstep on credit for prior learning, advocating for legislation, but also policy change, as well as direct work, uh, that pragmatic kind of dirt under the nails work that we do on the campus level. So um, we're gonna hear from Chris Howerton as a representative for the Statewide Academic Senate. Good morning. My name is Christopher Howerton and I am a North representative on the executive committee of the Academic Senate for California Community Colleges. On behalf of ASCCC, I would like to welcome you to this annual event. Your leadership, commitment to our students, and passion has shown great support for our system as we serve our students and support our veterans. The implementation of robust credit for prior learning strategies is showing tremendous outcomes as it relates to first, minimizing time to completion of degrees and certificates typically saving our students between six and 10 months. And students who earn credit for prior learning are roughly twice as likely to complete a degree than those who do not. Second, retention and persistence of students at our college. And finally, acceptance of credit for prior learning is becoming one of those deciding factors for potential students who are considering enrolling in our colleges. Offering credit for prior learning also acknowledges and validates students' experiences and education beyond our campus, and that this 
previous learning has value and is valuable. Looking over your program for today, you have a very full and impressive agenda planned. I am sorry I am unable to join you in person and learn from each and every one of you today. I hope you find this gathering meaningful and supportive for your own local implementation of credit for prior learning. Additionally, if the Academic Senate for California Community College is able to support you further, please reach out to us at info at ASCCC.org. Thank you. Have a wonderful day today. Have a great event. And please, everyone, be well. All right, wonderful message from our partners at ASCCC. Um, many of us, you know, counselor by trade for many years. I know the AOs out there and the evaluators always get nervous about credit for prior learning and how does that work with the Cal State University system? As you know, if you attended last year's summit, the um, Cal State uh, Chancellor's Office worked to revamp their executive order on credit for prior learning weeks before uh, the second annual summit. This is the year of implementation on that executive order 10. 36. If you look at your agenda, you are going to have an opportunity to review some of those pathways into the Cal State. But we asked Assistant Vice Chancellor Brent Foster to share a little bit about uh, his experience with credit for prior learning and, and want to hear a message from him on a personal, meaningful story about credit for prior learning. Calvin? 31 years ago, and I can still remember the humid June Oklahoma air as we crammed into a cattle car with our bald heads, clunky black boots, shifting eyes, stiff new BDUs, and two fully loaded green duffel bags. On our way to meet our drill sergeants for the first time, the cattle car drove erratically across the post, taking corners on a dime, the engine revving and sputtering around the weight of a pack of untrained and untested GIs. We approached a scrubby looking field that was buzzing with men in the distinctive round brown hats. They were like finely pressed junkyard dogs, barking out orders in a language that was both recognizable and foreign at the same time. It soon became clear that we were lining up in the scrubby field and the drill sergeants were indignant about how slow we moved and how pathetic we looked. They screamed profanities, threatened us, and occasionally grabbed someone by the lapels and threw them to the ground. Once we were lined up, they demanded we hold a green duffel in each hand and heft them straight out from our sides. It was torturous and muscle failure was nearly immediate for most. When a private dropped his arms from fatigue, the swarm of round browns would attack and send the soldier to the ground for push-ups and degradation. At this point, about half of us were on the ground and drill sergeants began to get in the faces of those still standing and, and thunder, why did you join my army? Our voices were soft, rattled and unclear. Each answer to the question was wrong and resulted in a get down and knock them out. In the chaos, I thought about my own answer. Why did I join the army? I mainly joined to get the GI Bill and try to go to college after my enlistment. And then I heard someone close to me, drill sergeant, to go to college, drill sergeant. Wrong answer. Again. Now it was my turn. A hulking pile of muscle and veins sprang into my face and boomed. Why did you join my army, private? Time stood still, but... Somewhere in my mind, in my limited 18 years on this earth, I mustered the words, to serve my country, drill sergeant? A second flashed, but my answer was wrong, and I was immediately on my face doing push-ups. The drill sergeant bent down and yelled in my ear, don't you ever disrespect me like that again. When you talk to me, you say drill sergeant before and after anything you say. A little did I know that I was actually attending a college course that would yield six units of special credits for active military duty. Years later, I graduated college with 129 units, nine more than I needed, and you'll likely understand that the six units of credit I earned for basic training really amounted to nothing. 
They were not applied to any specific general education or major requirements. They were just empty units. Today, as a faculty member and administrator in the CSU, I applaud the efforts that are being made across the systems in California to bolster and solidify credit for prior learning. And I praise the excellent work being done here today at the third annual CPL Summit. Many thanks and adoration to you all. Thank you, Dr. Foster. I um, also want to state that with within the veteran space and the reentry space, we have a lot of bipartisan support. Both sides of the aisle can come together with this, but we do have some major champions in the state of California that wanted to say a few words. Um, Assembly member Sir, Sabrina Cervantes has been a, an advocate um, from day one. Uh, a few words from uh, Ms. Cervantes. Hi everyone, I'm Assembly Member Sabrina Cervantes, proudly representing California's 60th Assembly District and Chair of the Assembly Select Committee on Veterans, Employment, and Education. I want to thank Norco College for putting together this virtual event today. Most importantly, I want to thank you for being here. California is home to an estimated 1.8 million veterans, and as many of you are aware, Riverside County is home to the third largest veteran population in the state. As someone whose family has served in nearly every branch of our nation's armed forces since World War II, I know the importance of serving those who have served. One of my top priorities in the state legislature has been ensuring that California veterans have the resources they need when they return home from service. That means making sure our student veterans have the opportunity to achieve their dreams of higher education and can use their military experience as relevant course credit in college. Back in 2017, the military articulation platform was still only a pilot project. That year, I successfully fought for $250,000 in the state budget to support its development. That same legislative session, I introduced Assembly Bill 1786, which is now law to help expand the use of credit for students with prior learning. We have come a long way since then. Today, what was once a pilot project has now been implemented at 54 community colleges. MAP has also been integrated into the student intake process so that student veterans have maximum access to college credit opportunities. I was fortunate to have the opportunity to meet with student veterans at Norco College recently, and we spoke about how prior credit through MAP has helped them put them on a path to achieve their dreams. It is conversations like those that remind me of why we do what we do. We owe it to our veterans who have fought for and served our country at every level to recognize their service, not just through words, but through action. Today, I am proud to have secured $2 million in this year's state budget to continue the development and expansion of MAP, bringing our state's total investment in MAP to 4.25 million so far. These vital investments will help scale up MAP in order to provide opportunities to more student veterans across the state of California. And they are real concrete commitments to those who have served. To our veterans, you have contributed more than our nation can ever repay. Know that your hard work and sacrifice in defense of our freedom is deeply appreciated and will always be remembered. I am proud that the 60th Assembly District can call Norco College its own. Thank you. I hope you all have a great summit. All right. And um, part of our uh, selected officials that are um, in our California delegation, we're, we're proud to boast the VA, um, the House Veterans Affairs Chair, Congressman Mark DeCano. Mark DeCano is also a major supporter of our military and credit for prior learning. Here's a message from Congressman DeCano. Hello and welcome to the California MAP Initiative's third annual CPL Summit. I'm Mark Ticano, Chairman of the House Committee on Veterans Affairs. Veterans enlisted to protect our nation's values, among the most important of these values being that every American has access to the opportunity to fulfill the American dream. 
As chairman, I work to eliminate barriers that may stand in the way of our veterans' pursuit to fulfill their own American dream. This work would not be possible without programs such as MAP, and I am heartened that they share in our commitment to helping veterans thrive. We know that the transition from active duty service to veteran status can bring not only new opportunities, but also substantial adjustment and stress. And that is why, as chairman of this committee, I'm committed to ensuring veterans leave the military empowered with the tools they need to build successful lives following their military service. We continue to back up that commitment with action by passing out of the House of Representatives legislation that makes it easier for veterans to be fully and holistically supported on their academic journey. Programs such as MAP allow veterans to have a head start in education and employment, which is paramount in those crucial months of transition. And that is why we have also prioritized service members finding jobs before they even leave the military through the SkillBridge program, which allows employers to offer training and employment in the final months of a member's transition to civilian life. We're also working to let veterans know that they can apply for a temporarily expanded public service loan forgiveness before October 31st. So be sure to sign up today if you haven't already. Veterans have already made incredible sacrifices on behalf of our nation. They should get credit for the training and coursework they've already completed and be able to utilize that to successfully make the transition from service member to veteran. Venues like this one are vital to helping us better understand the continuing education process for our veterans and identify areas for improvement. And I strongly support your work. On behalf of the House Committee on Veterans Affairs, welcome and thank you for all the service that you are providing to our country. So having uh, advocacy and support in Sacramento and DC is wonderful, but we all know that if you don't have advocacy and support locally, if you're not dealing with the governance and the advocacy on your own campus, then it all goes for naught. I, I want to introduce a stalwart supporter of our project and one of the few counselors that are that's in the uh, CEO ranks in our system, um, my new boss, Dr. Monica Green. Good morning, and thank you for attending the third annual CPL Summit. Now, before diving into the details of CPL, it might be helpful to go over the issues we're attempting to solve with credit for prior learning. Who will benefit if we solve them and what we can do to get started? So our challenge, the first challenge is enrollment. Our students are going elsewhere for career readiness and education, and this is a big problem. Historic drops in enrollment, 1.4 million lost nationwide and 827,000 lost at the community colleges indicates that the perceived value and relevancy of higher education is shrinking and competition for students is growing. We must remain focused on building direct pipelines to high skill, high wage career opportunities and career advancement. We need to find answers to the growing challenge of industry-based credentialing, which extends beyond the traditional higher education model and offers more efficient and contextualized learning, resulting in higher pay rather than higher debt. College initiatives often focus on traditional college entry, yet 42.1% of enrolled California community college students are adult re-entry learners. Our initiatives must focus on these students too. For-profit institutions are great at offering CPL upfront, recruiting and helping students complete. Example is the University of Phoenix. Now at $46 per unit and 47% of our students paying no fees, the California community colleges are an affordable choice, yet our advantage is weakening when we leave CPL out of the equation. We are failing many of our veterans and adult reentry learners who run out of GI benefits and financial aid before they can complete advanced certification or a bachelor's or master's degree. Our second challenge, we are working in isolation rather than together for our students and lack systematic strategic approaches. While CPL has grown to be one of the strongest equitable access completion interventions available. 
One, there's no state and national organization driving the mission to integrate CPL into higher education onboarding processes. Two, there's no singular voice leading the movement to align intersegmental policies and practices so that students have a clear pathway to transfer and career attainment. There's no statewide organization to provide professional development, training, support, resources, and technology to colleges endeavoring to institutionalize CPL. And there's no strategic advocacy for CPL reforms. CPL would immediately maximize our colleges if we could claim apportionment for every CPL unit transcribed and reported to the state. Everyone would gain, including the taxpayer. Our third challenge that we face is our business processes and technology and technology are not designed to support CPL. Our student outreach, onboarding procedures, and college programs are not designed to capture potential CPL students up front uh, and match their credentials to college program and, transfer, and their transfer goals. CPL support is rarely mentioned in faculty and administrative job descriptions, collective bargaining agreements, or statements of shared values. There is no public, zero-cost, student, and college-facing technology solution to connect credit recommendations with college catalogs involving faculty in the approval process and involve colleges in the articulation sharing process. Enrollment will grow as we attract learners to college who would not otherwise come to us. It would be seen as increasingly indispensable for career skills and life citizenry um, readiness. Completion and retention rates will increase as students are immediately invested in the college through significant CPL awards. Total units per student will increase funding while unnecessary units will decrease. Our, our students will feel increasingly valued and at home at colleges that respect their entire portfolio of learning. Higher education will be seen as increasingly indispensable for career opportunities and advancement. By tying liberal education to career readiness and a prosperous citizenry, we magnify its values and safeguard its place in the curriculum. So here's my ask of you today. System leaders work to align policies and procedures to ensure the portability of CPL, allowing students to complete their higher degree goals with existing GI benefits, GI Bill benefits, and financial aid. Executive leaders ensure that policies, regulations, collective bargaining agreements, and organizational charts clearly support CPL from outreach to onboarding to completion and transfer. Hire or designate a CPL coordinator at your college, and before adding CPL um, to classified duties, find existing duties that can be eliminated to make space for CPL. For faculty, embrace CPL to strengthen your discipline, attract more diverse learners with life and career experience, and deepen connections with the community and workspace. Administrators, learn about the benefits and supports of CPL. Thank you for coming today and learning the creative ways to talk about it and support it with staffing, resources, and procedures. For our classified professionals, help us develop and clarify procedures to ensure that our students get the CPL that they deserve. And everyone, please support the efforts of the California MAP Initiative, whose mission is to address these problems and, and opportunities, ensuring an equitable boost to all adult reentry learners, veterans, professionals, technicians, and otherwise. The initiative needs ongoing funding to allow for a team to be assembled and to build out the technology, training, research, and support needs uh, in the state at no cost to institutions. By working together, we strengthen the academy, prepare and stay relevant to the workforce of the future, and optimize the power of our significant investments in military benefits and financial aid. With your participation today, we see the, col see the colleges and systems beginning to unify. It's beautiful. Thank you for your support and for keeping our students first. You are transforming lives every day. Thank you.
Excellent, Dr. Green. Thank you so much. Um, I, I do have one other ask is that you don't steal our president with, with how amazing she is and how, how she gets it. So yeah, wonderful words, words wonderful asks. Um, now we're off to the meat and potatoes. I'm going to hand it off to our chief ambassador for the California MAP Initiative, uh, Dr. Sam Lee. Um, this is Now it's time to roll up the sleeves for the hard work and talk about our initiative in the past, our initiative in the future, and what you can do on your campuses. Sam? Thank you, Terrence. Thank you, Dr. Green. And uh, thank you, presenters, for that wonderful uh, landscape of, uh, for CPL, supporting CPL. Today, I'd like to talk with you about the mission and the big goals of the California MAP Initiative. And then we'll switch to a brief story from Dean Gina Brown at the Chancellor's Office. Then we'll talk about the CPL opportunity and a story from Palomar. And then we'll discuss our progress and activities with the MAP Initiative. And then we will move into our concurrent sessions. So our goal is to maximize credit for prior learning for veterans and adult reentry learners so they receive the credit they've earned, avoid repeat study, and achieve extended educational and career goals with existing benefits and financial aid. Our big goal is to mobilize the California Community College system and align it with the CSUs and the UCs and our workforce partners to maximize degree and certificate applicable CPL. So that, here's the big, uh, uh, goal is that military students can complete a four-year graduate degree with existing three-year benefits. They only have 36 months of benefits, and we want to make it possible for them to complete uh, uh, two years of study without using their benefits and then transfer to a CSU UC or four-year and be able to have the full three years of benefits to complete up to a master's degree or beyond. Then we also want to enable adult reentry students to uh, access college, those who wouldn't otherwise come and complete their higher education and skill attainment goals with existing financial aid, and all because of a CPL boost offered. Here's our short-term goals for the, for the initiative. It's that all military students receive their all eligible basic training units, including those who use and do not use benefits, or those who only identify as military on CCC apply. When we analyze the data, from our cohort colleges, we see that on average, our colleges uh, offer 4.2 units to service members who just complete basic training. So it doesn't re really require any articulation. Uh, if you complete basic training, come to one of our cohort colleges, on average, you'll get 4.2 units. The range is actually from zero units to 12 units, as high as 12 units, just for completing basic training. The problem with this is many of our colleges are awarding that uh, default credit or that area E credit for basic training only to those who, who use benefits, who use their GI Bill benefits. Well, we'd like to kind of delay their use of the benefits while the, the uh, student fees are inexpensive at the community colleges. Many uh, qualify for BOG waivers or a college promise and also Pell Grant usage so they can rely on that rather than using their military uh, GI Bill benefits, delay the use of those benefits, and then save those for uh, extended uh, degree completion. So what we'd like to do is also offer these units to those veterans who do not indicate or use their benefits, and maybe they only indicate on CCC apply that they are military affiliated or veterans or active duty. We believe those veterans are falling, falling between the cracks, and we want to address that this year. We also want to encourage and help and support colleges to have a plan to begin outreach to students with industry credentials to analyze for CPL. And we also want to help and support our cohort colleges to have a functioning procedure to comply with Title V, 55050, sections J and K, and I'll get to those in just a second. If we could complete, if we could achieve our first goal, which was to award that average 4.2 units to all eligible service members in the state of California. We have 23,462 GI Bill recipients in the state. Uh, and 11,777 of those are at our MAP cohort colleges. I estimate, we, we guesstimate that another 12,000 uh, service members are enrolled, but they're not using their benefits nor using uh, VRC services. So maybe we could estimate that there are 24,000 uh, courses 
or 99,000, almost 100,000 units that we could award for basic training. And when we look at the per unit savings, it's $2,287 per unit. So that works out to 200, almost $230 million in savings that we could achieve with actually not too huge of an effort. Here's the sections on Title V, 5505 that we want to be able to uh, achieve. So we want to be able to ensure that our students, when they complete their ed plan, that they, uh, that they have been assessed for prior learning. That means we need to take a systematic approach to do that. Also, we need to offer our students the ability or the opportunity to accept, decline, or appeal decisions. I think we're not at a, uh, at a uh, stage yet where we can assure that, but that's a goal of ours to enable that. I'd like to transition now a little bit from military credit into a larger CPL story uh, that we discovered when we met with uh, Dean Gina Brown at the Chancellor's office. And so, Gina, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and then we're going to switch to you and hear from you just for a few minutes. Here we go. Good morning, everyone. Again, thank you for inviting me. My name is Gina Brown and I am one of the deans at the California Community Colleges Chancellor's Office. Let me start by saying that I could easily be the poster child for why the vision for success goals exist today. I never graduated from a community college. I didn't really transfer and I definitely accumulated way more units than I needed. When I graduated high school way back in 1991, I attended UC San Diego with dreams of becoming a chemist. And about six months into it, I unceremoniously flunked out. As a first generation college student, I did not have the financial, emotional, or just the general support I needed to be successful. So I came home to Sacramento. I immediately got a retail job and a job unloading trucks and enrolled for two classes at Sacramento City College. For years, I worked two jobs, sometimes three, and tried multiple times to restart my college education. In that time, I had a lot of starts and stops. While I was passing classes, I was also accumulating a lot of W grades. And after 10 years, I said, I'm done. I had already given up my dream to be a chemist since the vast majority of the math and science classes were during the day and I worked during the day and the night. And I was always so tired, too tired for homework for sure. I remember crying in the American River College parking lot one night right after I dropped two classes and added two more W's to my transcript. It was a tough time for me. I felt like a failure. So I resigned myself to work and to work really hard since I didn't know what else to do. Fast forward a few years and in 2002, an outreach representative from CSU Sacramento gave a presentation at my job geared to working adults to earn their bachelor's degree. The classes would be held on weekends, which means I would have to quit my second job at Target and forgo the discount, but I couldn't pass it up, especially after they said I could get credit for some of my work experience, which at this point had been 16 years. To make that, so those, those credits would make up for some of the required courses in a degree of vocational education with a credential to teach adult education. While it wasn't a degree in chemistry, I saw it as my only viable opportunity to get a degree. In the course of a long year of weekends, I was able to demonstrate that my work experience was enough to earn 29 units as credit for prior learning. Those 29 units saved me 10 months of weekends, but it really did more than that. Those 29 units validated all of my work experience. Without those 29 units, I might have needed to continue to work few jobs. Those 29 units also recognize that different educational backgrounds and pathways to success exist and are just as legitimate and effective as traditional pathways. Shortly after I earned my bachelor's degree, I earned a master's degree in counselor education. I've had the opportunity to work at Evergreen Valley College, San Jose State University, the California Student Aid Commission, and now the Chancellor's Office, where every day I do what I can to ensure that all educational journeys end with success. It took 14 years from when I graduated high school to get my first degree, and while it was not easy for me, I am proud that generations after me and my family will no longer be first-generation college students. We are running uh, just a bit long, and so I'm going to power through these slides so we can end in just three minutes. And I want there are a couple I do want to touch on, but I did want to share with you some of the need. But I, I will share this in the slide deck, which will be available after the summit. the The need is huge. We have a uh, 2.4 million uh, 
uh, degree gap in to meet workforce needs in California alone, which means we need a 10% increase every year for 10 years. And, and uh, we believe that there are 5.1 million California adults that intend to enroll in higher education in the next two years. And a third of those are Latinx adults who intend to enroll in higher ed. We know that 84% of adult learners say the CPL option would strongly influence their choice of a college or university. However, only 11% receive CPL. And may, maybe one reason is we have a petition process for CPL. We need to change that. We know that adult learners complete at twice the rate of those who don't receive CPL. If you look in isolation, 17% uh, increase in completion rates uh, for those who receive 15 units of CPL. It reduces time to completion. It saves money. It increases enrollment by 17 and a half units. It offers a great outreach opportunity and offers validation and motivation to students that they belong in college. Uh, California Community College System is the highest enroller of GI Bill recipients in the, in the nation with 23,450. And look at the difference in the cost per enrollment. If you notice, it's 370 versus really almost 10 times as much at uh, other systems. And so it really, it, it really uh, it accentuates the opportunity we have to save uh, GI Bill funding for our students. This is a list uh, in descending order of where our GIs enroll in the California Community College System. It will be available in the slide deck with the complete list scrolls down, but you can see it starts at San Francisco and works down. We have many of the, the, these colleges in our cohort. Uh, Palomar is the, uh, with 972 is in our cohort, as well as the San Diego colleges and their heavy hitters with our GI Bill recipients. Uh, the veteran opportunity is large. If we were able to accommodate our 26,000 veterans in active duty who are currently enrolled with just 15 units of credit, it would save $3.875 billion in benefits. It's a huge opportunity. And more importantly, it would enable them to pursue a master's, bachelor's, doctorate degree. And take a look at this. 81% of our transferring students from the CCC to the CSU, 81% uh, come from the CCCs to the CSU. And so we are a vital partner with the CSUs, which is why we're working so closely together with them. I would like to uh, have a chance for Candace to tell a story. Uh, and so Candace, if you can unmute, go ahead and take it away and I'll run the slide. Hi everyone, um, thank you. Uh, my name is Candace Rose from Palomar College and this is one of our success stories of why we do what we do for Credit for Prior Learning. This is Gunny Sergeant uh, Ricardo Candelario. He is our recent Palomar graduate, an active duty Marine. And he came to Palomar College and earned 12 credits in our military leadership program. And here's his quote, being able to earn those 12 units through credit for prior learning option from completing his sergeant school, not only jump-started my goal to earn a degree, but has provided me the confidence I was missing while also igniting the determination needed to achieve that goal. Thanks, Palomar. I probably still wouldn't have pursued a degree if it wasn't for this option. So he is a first-generation college student. Um, he graduated from Palomar with his military uh, leadership uh, associate degree and two other associate degrees as well. And he has now transferred on for his uh, degree in his bachelor's program with um, organizational leadership. So he's a real success story. And you can just see from these slides as we're clicking through quickly that um, these are the articulations. Sergeant School um, on the, the right, these are their courses and these are the courses on the left uh, through Palomar that he was able to earn through Credit for Prior Learning. Thank you, Candace. You're welcome. It's wonderful. This is his transcript. We're just gonna rifle through that. This is our MAP 22 cohort, uh, MAP 2022 cohort of 55 colleges. And I'm just going to power through these. We need to end. And uh, I've already shared our short-term goals. And we have some example outcomes. We're meeting regularly with a CPL work group every other Thursday, working on solutions statewide, having regular meetings with the CSU Chancellor's Office and the UC Office President, Office of the President. And uh, we're, we're making progress on awarding and articulating uh, CPL. We'll just go ahead and push through these. And we have some ongoing challenges and some exciting develops, developments I won't share. We have to get into our sessions. And let me just, uh, as we get into our sessions, you'll see the opportunity to join a track one, track two, or track three. Uh, you should see buttons like breakout room. If you don't see breakout rooms, 
you can click the more button and then you should see breakout rooms and you can join one of these you can select anyone to join make sure you click yes and here's the one thing we want you to remember when you leave the breakout room do not click leave meeting just uh, uh keep that in mind click leave breakout room otherwise you'll be out of the meeting and have to re-enter the meeting these are the three sessions uh, that we have available to you now we're going to take a short break and be back at 9 50 uh, with our sessions and so you can choose those uh, at 9 50. <laughs>